morning friends um, so welcome to another vlog I'm just heading to the studio I just want to show you we um, put in some a path actually to the studio um, which was a bit of an ordeal to lay but it's done now and um, we just planted these flowers alongside I think they look so cute this guy I don't know how to pronounce them but I'll leave them linked down below if you're interested um, they grow like about a meter and a half so I think they'll look lovely um, on the way to the studio <laughs> so I have some cottages just drying outside um, and I'm just gonna unload the kiln I put a big firing on in uh, Big Alice so with a lot of new pieces actually so I kind of wanted to show you guys those and today I'm going to be glazing these so I'll show you some of my favourite pieces that I'm going to glaze. I really like this jug because I haven't actually properly made a jug before. This guy's hot as well. I did a luster test so it's a, a kind of a, a platinum luster test in here so I'll show you that maybe when um, I can open it either later today or tomorrow. But yeah, I'm really happy with this guy. We've, it's like summer now so we've been having a lot of sangrias in the um, in the garden so I wanted to have a sangria a special sangria jug so this is what I'm hopefully this guy is gonna be but if I like how it works I just want to check the handle and the pour and everything I might add these to the core collection so people can pre-order them if they're interested and I'm also really happy with these um, good these kind of I'm trying to do more um, traditional types of work so these guys are like based on those kind of old vintage pots you see in like cottage kitchens and people you put their like utensils in the top and I kind of melded that with like a milk churn kind of vibe so I really ha like how they um, turned out because a lot of my vases have a very small neck but these are very chunky necks so you can put a, like a big bunch of flowers in there but yeah and then this is the its bigger friend I really love how they look though. I'm just, I'll show you how I glaze these. I'm thinking to do one colour here and one colour here and hopefully they kind of drip a little bit so they don't look too perfect. I kind of want them to look quite rustic. And then I just um, included a lot of my just general tableware, like my dishes, pasta dishes, plates in here as well. So I'll show you how I unload the kiln and then you can kind of get a sense of how um, we pack the kiln and how much we fit into the kiln. We're actually thinking of, um, I'll just take one of these inside, we're actually thinking of doing a um, kiln video with the um, my newer kiln, so Big Alice, which is um, a scut kiln. So I wanted to kind of just give my thoughts on it and how it's working for us and then also kind of show you how we pack it and just like some of the tips we learnt along the way that we um, kind of optimise so that the kiln is like firing nicely. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably coming in in a month or so. And I know I've probably said it before, but we've been very setting up the studio we haven't been able to upload that much but now everything is kind of getting there we kind of want to make sure we upload videos more often so we're planning to do two videos per month try to keep me to that um, and we're thinking I'm thinking it'd be nice to have one more vloggy chatty video like this and then one more tutorial video so if you're interested in something in particular I know someone mentioned to that they want a Kurenuki glazing which I'll definitely do like a more tu tutorial based on that so I can kind of show you my favorite glazes maybe in include some recipes of my favorite glazes if you're interested in making your own glazes we make all of our own glazes here we don't um we don't buy any commercial ones um, just because it's more cost effective and then we have control over them. Um, so if you want to make your own glazes, some of the recipes, um, I'll send links to some of my favourite ones so that work well on Kurenuki because it's quite... Um, how I glaze Kurenuki is... how I pick the glazes is a bit different to just like standard wear. Um, so yeah, I'm going to unload the kiln and then I'll lay out all of the the bits I have to glaze today and I'll probably just show you some of my like favorite bits and how I glaze those so yeah I'll do that now 
hopefully you can see everything here so I'll pop all of my bits on the table what I like to do when I unload the kiln is just get everything out see what I have and then I'll go through all of my pre-orders that I have from the website and select what I want from um, my bisque to glaze for those. I kind of just make sure that the plates match nicely if they've ordered like a set. I also have a few like of these kind of pieces so this is kind of, bit, I think you can see it a bit better, that I want to um, glaze. Just These are just for our house but if we like how it looks and people are interested I can definitely put these on the website to pre-order. Let's stick that guy there. Okay, I'm going to unload now. These are just kind of my normal um, kind of dishes that I have as part of the dinner set. This is a cute dish, one of my students came, they came for a wheel throwing class. It turned out so cute. <laughs> a little dish for, she has a lot of tapas, so she wanted like a little tapas dish. So cute. And then I also have some of um, our pasta dishes, which, so just for size reference. Our pasta dishes, normal dishes. Pasta dishes actually really, um, I never really had a pasta dish before I started making them, but these are our most used dishes. We use for everything. We use them to, like for rice, um, like obviously pasta. <laughs> Sometimes I like to have like a salad in there and like, um, uh, like a piece of meat or <laughs> A piece of meat, um, like some grilled like meat or chicken or that kind of thing. So I actually use them for everything. I love them. Oh, sorry, another piece for my student. She's coming back to glaze them, so I'll keep those separated. And we're also, we're also working on a new range. So this is kind of a. Uh, more of like a, I guess like a traditional like ornate bowl. If I compare it to my normal bowls, these are like my normal bowls which are very like um, kind of more contemporary and just um, quite simple. But we wanted to include another range that is like much more decorative. So it has a foot, it has like a flared out um, rim. I'm gonna like glaze it like in a more like interesting way. So I wanna do some like brush strokes and some patterns and stuff. So it looks um, kind of a bit more like traditional how people would decorate um, bowls and plates like kind of back in the day. So we kind of have the two options on the website, the more like traditional and the more contemporary. So I'm really liking how that one's turned out. This is the first one I made, so it's a prototype. And then also this kind of looks a bit weird, but we um, compost everything. So I wanted to have a compost bowl, but I know it's kind of a, like a bit, kind of feels a bit top heavy. <laughs> I kind of like how cute it looks like a massive like ramen bowl or something but um like a ramen bowl for giants I'm into it um but yeah I wanted to have like a compost dish but I wanted to have like a domed top so if it gets full um you know you can like pile up your veggies and then also like um if that gets full and I don't want to empty it I can use the the top as a dish as well which kind of has the lid to be a stand so excited to glaze that. The Harry Potter aka Paul is um, very excited to see his new compost um, dish. I think I'm gonna mainly glaze it white, maybe white and yellow. I'll see. I'll show you these. This is something that we're making for our bathroom some kind of cute tiles so I press um, lace into a slab of clay I kind of use spaces to cut the clay out and then um, cut them to size we have a cutter and then I glaze them I'll show you it glaze we're gonna be glazing them in the opal color so they kind of turn out like kind of like that because I kind of thought it'd be nice to do like a bathroom before and after so we're renovating the bathroom in a couple of months once I've made all the tiles so we uh, worked out we need like 480 tiles so I've made like 40 <laughs> so we'll see so um, 
we're doing three different colours, so a green, an opal and a yellow. So yeah, I thought you might be interested in seeing like a before and after. Um, and then also I might, I'll might include actually how I make the tiles in case you want to make them as well. Um, they're very easy to make, um, I just you just have to make sure that they dry flat. So actually I'll show you, I've got some in the process of drying now. So I just use these bats, these are from Hartley & Noble, but I think you can probably use any type of like water resistant MDF cut into bats. And then these are some that I cut out so these are drying outside at the moment and um, I just dry them in between these bats until they get like hard and then I uh, take them out of the bat so that they can like fully dry and I also made some plates to match that bowl so needs a bit of sanding missed a bit there we go yeah so kind of some more ornate plates that have like a nice rim and I've trimmed the bottom um, and I've got like a smaller plate to go match that one and then also like a pasta dish as well so they all kind of follow the same shape Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah it's just there everything's looking good it's just that big mixed dinner set yeah let's have a look Also made some plant pots. Oh, very nice. Got a little hole. Oh, you're not showing me. What's that? I'm not showing you. Are you on camera, babe? So I made like a little drainage hole and then a little dish to for them to sit on. <laughs> the biggest. When I threw this, I thought it was really big, but it's kind of like a normal plant pot size <laughs> after firing. <laughs> I made these kind of little small guinomi kind of cups here for kind of tea or espresso and then my tea sets so they kind of look like this and they have a lid and a strainer you can see there's little holes to strain the tea and what's cute about it is that you can turn the lid back back over and just set your strainer down on the um, uh, side while you're drinking your tea so those make quite cute gifts actually and I do like a textured surface or I have some that are smooth as well so and I also kind of made these like little cups as well just for I like drink I like using them for wine I don't know I find them really like satisfying to hold with this little bit um, oh yeah and I made these like little soy sauce dishes as well I know so that you can just stack like that because we always have soy sauce and we never have the dishes, so <laughs> finally I have made some. So the kiln's unloaded now, I'll just show you everything so you can kind of get a sense of what fits into the kiln. So loads of cups, so we've got you know me, bigger you know me, um, so I guess you call this Gwinomi, <laughs> you know me. Um, my tea sets, um, some wine cups there, I got some pasta dishes, normal dishes, um, plant pots, students work, um, some new items and then also that was in there and also all those tiles. So um, yeah if you're thinking of getting the scut I'll do a video on it but it's the um, KMT 1018 I think so it's like 135 litre um, and you can get a decent amount in there so yeah and I pack quite conservatively you can definitely put more in there but I get a bit anxious <laughs> so I try not to like push it um, so yeah what I'm gonna do now is plan out all my glazing and then I'll show you some bits that I really like and how I glaze those so yeah in a bit guys Hey, so I've just um, organised everything Everything I'm going to glaze, um, so I've just laid it out here, there, so lots of cups, and then a few different items here. I just wanted to show you, I just pulled out some of the luster tests I was doing, um, so we're getting ready for Christmas, and we're still, we're quite late already, I kind of wanted to have everything done like at the beginning of the year just so that I knew exactly what was coming out at Christmas I know it seems really early but you have to do so much promotion and get stuff ready for Christmas um, like in summertime so um, we're doing some tests to do some luster because we want to add gold and silver details to our like little cottages for the Christmas decorations and I just did a couple of tests just on some test tiles so I'll show you 
so this is the gold and silver so here so this textile's a bit mental i kind of just did it like <laughs> with whatever i had lying around but this bit here is the silver and that's the gold and then um i have this like raised bit kind of is mainly slip that's raised up because i wanted to add some like nice decorations to the cottages and then um i also have it just on the flat surface so you can see on the flat surface really reflective and then on the raised bit it looks a bit more um like Motley's kind of antique effect which I really like actually I like both of them so yeah I'm really happy with how that turned out and this is just the same kind of thing I just wanted to have it over like one of our glazes just to see how it would look but yeah I really love the um gold and the silver so this is gold and that's um platinum I think yeah but I'll if I can I'll link down the luster I use um to make those so Actually, when I decorate the cottages, I think I'll film that so I can pop that in a little luster. I wanted to make like a little luster tutorial. Um, not that I'm an expert, expert, but I remember when I was like looking, there wasn't that much information. So I just document what I do and kind of how I fight in the kiln, how much I put on because how much you paint on is actually quite important to get a nice effect. Um, I'll show you the cottages actually that I want to add the luster to. Just these kind of guys. So this is like the decoration I did in slip and that's kind of what I want to highlight but I also thought it'd be nice to highlight a few areas like around the window maybe or in the door um, on the glazed part as well. So I think they look really cute. So these are going to be like Christmas decorations. Um, so this is a bit early but if you, re if you like those um, I'll show you what they look like. Um, we always kind of um, release those to the website to our mailing list subscribers first um, so you can definitely sign up I'll put the link down below if you're interested in those and if you're a forward planner for Christmas um, so yeah I'm gonna just start glazing stuff now and maybe I'll just sh show you some close-ups of the bits that are more interesting um, so yeah I think I'll get on and do that and then I'll just check in with you like halfway through to see how it's going okay bye Um, so I've just waxed everything and done the inside of most so I normally do all of my pots with um, white inside and then I will finish off the pot if it needs if it's if it's meant to be a white pot so I'll do white on the outside as well but mainly I'll just do white in the middle so these are all my bowls cups and um, that's our compost dishes over there little mug and then all these cups up here so these have white on the bottom so i go ahead and do white underneath um and then sorry white on the outside and then these are all the white pots that i've just like finished um so yeah next is to do the outside so because they're all different colors i'll do them in stages so yeah i'll do all blues in one go all um greens in one go kind of thing so 
that's the next step. So I think I won't film that just because I'm quite low on battery. So I will show you at the end. Okay, so it's a bit later now and I've glazed everything. So I just wanted to show you um, because I was doing a lot of different colors. So it looks quite pretty. So I have all of these. So this is the my sunset color. So the L on the mug up there and I won't go through all of the different colours, but this is them all glazed up and drying. So I'll probably put them all up on the shelves to dry so that I can load the kiln tomorrow. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. So I just wanted to show you what I'm doing next. So I just wanted to, this plate I did really like um, last minute, spare of the moment, I didn't really plan it, but I really love the effect of like looking at the brush strokes and this is actually in a wood firing. Um, so I can't really replicate exactly this in our electric kiln, but I'm gonna try to replicate it with um, test um, underglazes. So I did a bit of a test here um, and I'm going to try to do something like this on this little plate. Yeah, so if I put that there, then you can see. Perfect, so for the pink, it's actually a maroon. It's this one um, from Amico, and it's the maroon color. I'll do that first. With these, I always feel like, um, I always, with these I always feel like you have to really go for it, you can't be really precious with it, so um, like with that I, I glazed that plate in like two seconds and I think that's why I really like it, but then if you want to replicate it, it's not really something you can easily do. Okay, let's try a smaller brush, so I'm just using kind of this size brush and I'm gonna do, this is the lighter one so I think I'll just, I probably should have started with the darker one but here we are. And then I did a little whoop, <laughs> whoop, <laughs> drops. Okay, I don't hate it. Um, I might try a different brush with the other one so that it looks a bit different. I'm gonna try this more like fanned brush. This one's like messed up, but hopefully it'll give some nice effect. Do three, yeah, three in the middle. <laughs> Hopefully, it will tone down once it's all glazed. And then I do like a little whoop, I like that, and then that. Whoa, I like it, it looks cool. So, yeah, I'm hoping so it won't be that bright because it kind of looks like a child just had a go at your plate. <laughs> So let's see how that looks. So I'm gonna let that dry and then put the glaze over the top. I've just poured on a kind of a clear green glaze on the top so you can see the brush strokes I've made underneath. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed, it turns out amazing. <laughs> Always happens with pots that you love, isn't it? <laughs> Hey friends, um, so I just wanted to wrap up the vlog and show you all of the pots out of the kiln. So they've gone in for their glaze firing and now um, I have them all out and I can show you. So here they are out on the table. Um, you can also get a sense of what fits into Big Alice, which is a Scut KMT 1018. Um, it's like 135 litres and um, basically all of these came out as well as those guys in there. So yeah, those are the plant pots with a drainage hole. I really like how they kind of came out. The glaze is really pretty. And you can kind of see this is the green one. It's quite dark so you might not pick it up on camera but it's a really beautiful green. And also the sunset colour. 
it's kind of like this orangey sunset with some purple bits in it and they come on these like little dishes if you have a drainage hole then it sits on this dish and catches the water um, oh yeah I made some really cute soy sauce dishes we always need like little dishes in the house and we don't have some so I made some of those I really like this color yeah this came out really nice the sunset pretty um, and then yeah I made some newer cups so these I kind of wanted them to be like kind of ombre cups where the color kind of goes into white at the bottom so I just did it on a few of our glazes kind of worked a bit better with the green and then also the blue how it kind of like basically like fades and um, melts into the white I think it looks really pretty um, and then these are some of our simple so we we stock these you know me cup um, but I want to make, make like a little version so these are called Gwinomi and they're kind of like little versions of the bigger ones so I have it in the kind of more um, wobbly style and then this is the straight style and I did all those in the different colours we have in the range so, so this is sunset it's like an orange with purple tones this is a yellow it's a lighter blue this is the darker blue is our opal colour this is this new green um, kind of really hard to pick how pretty this is on camera it's just like a kind of like an Aribe style green this is our white so it's basically a bit like a warmer version um, so the opal is kind of mainly white but it has these cooler tones in it Whereas the white is like a warm, a warm white. And then our jade green there. And I'm really happy with these actually. So these are some new big vases I threw, kind of inspired by like vintage style um, kind of uh, pots you get. And I glazed it in that green with white and it's just um, kind of faded really lovely. And then this is just a smaller version that I did in the kind of yellow and white. And then also, this is what I'm really happy with. So I glazed this teapot. I took this teapot, um, so I did some classes in Belgium, and I took back the teapot I made as a demonstration. And we had no idea like how the clay would be with our glazes, because it's not the clay we're used to. But it's come out so pretty. So this is like the Aribe style green that's kind of come out like, dark green but also has this blue where it's really thick and um, has kind of you can see it falling over the um, carvings which is so pretty uh, I can show you in front of the window yeah it's hard because it's so glossy to see this one but and because it's a dark clay, clay actually it's turned out so lovely with the white can really see the carvings through the glaze and then we did a yellow at the top so for reference this is the yellow we used and how it comes out on my clay is more um, you know like a, a ochre kind of colour whereas it's much darker on this clay as you'd expect because the clay is darker but I'm very happy <laughs> you know when you glaze something you kind of have no idea it's a miracle it actually comes out <laughs> properly um, yeah, so then we have just all these bits. I made this big bowl for our compost. And yeah, so I have all of these houses that I'm going to glaze today. Some are for pre orders. So these are houses that I styled on like their own personal home or um, a home of their friends. It's a really like nice gift so that they're very unique to the person. Um, and then I've also done my classic houses. And I've done these ones, a little sneak peek for Christmas. That I'm going to glaze up and add some luster to those. And I did a few in the wax melts as well. Um, and someone asked me to make a little Halloween house, which I thought was cute. Which I might make a tutorial on if you're interested, and how I carved it. That might be fun. 
on how to do this graffito carvings let me know down below if you'd like to see that um, yeah so I'm going to get on and glaze these hopefully it won't take too long it's a Sunday and I kind of want to go and potter in the garden and maybe go to the garden center so I'm going to quickly do this and hopefully have enough time in the day to do all those bits um, oh yeah I, one thing I forgot to show you that plate I did with underglaze turned out really cute so it's like um, got a green transparent glaze on top of underglaze paint strokes but I think it's a little bit too green for what we're looking for I think it'd be lovely like on a tile or like a decorative more like a vase or a jug or something like that but for food I feel like it's a bit too colourful so I'm going to repeat that and do more of like a kind of a brownie like a light beige I guess um, glaze over the top so I'll show you how that turns out um, I'm going to do that today and then I might share it in a future video if it looks nice so yeah so I'm going to get on and do that I hope everyone has fantastic whenever you're watching this weekend weekday whatever day it is um, and I will come back I think the next video I'm sharing is a tutorial of making a Kuroniki teapot so fingers crossed that goes up as scheduled um, so yeah I will see you guys soon and let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see anything from me we're kind of planning all our YouTube videos for the rest of the year so if you'd like to see something um, just pop it in there or if you have any questions I'm happy to help um, but otherwise thank you and bye